Hi everybody, I'm Amy, this is my wife Maggie, Hello. and together we are Thinkathema, and today we're excited to be reviewing Mythwind for you from two very different perspectives. This is a new game that is just releasing to Kickstarter backers now. It is by Open Our Studios and designers Brendan McCaskill and Nathan Liege. So in Mythwind, we find ourselves in this cozy and mythical valley where humans are going to be cohabitating with magical sprites. And our entire uh, purpose or reason for being here is we're going to be using our specialty and enhancing our skills in that specialty to contribute to the resources of the town, to help de uh, develop uh, that town through construction of different buildings. We're also going to be going on some adventures um, or, or, or to explore the different areas and just in general, live the uh, the life, experience the life in this beautiful place through different events. We're also going to have a, a bit of a goal as well to achieve by the end of each season, which is going to be one gaming session. Now, this game was famously marketed as the game that has no end, the game that has no objectives, and you are going to be wandering into this beautiful world and having that sandbox type experience. But there is a bit of structure in this game, and I'm going to explain to you how it works in a, in a brief way. Um, so we both share... Well, we share the same objective here. It's a cooperative game and we are building out this town in front of us that you can see this player board here that has empty spaces available for buildings that we're going to be constructing along the way and then buildings that have already been built where we're going to be able to send our character out into these town actions or these worker placement spots in some instances to get things done. And what you're trying to get done in the town is uh, raise the levels of the shared uh, resources that we have in order to build more of those buildings. And of course, we're going to be encountering different adventures mm. along the way and having events that affect all players. The mechanic that pushes this game along is the weather and as it changes within the season. Every game of Mythwind is one season and we're going to be turning over weather cards. These weather cards are going to sometimes have an interaction with the player's own skill set and things <laughs> they need to do under different weather conditions. But for the most part, it's going to progress the buildings that we have in this building tracker to be eventually built in the town. And it's going to trigger different events that we have to read at the beginning of that round um, that are going to potentially impact the things that we're going to be doing. At the start of each season, we will have a collective goal that we're trying to achieve um, and we will get some bonuses if we're able to achieve that goal. But the way that the rest of the game plays out is we will do all of these administrative type actions in the dawn phase and then we'll move into the daytime phase. And the daytime phase is really the core of this game and it consists of really three different types of actions. The first action that you'll get to take is the one with your physical miniature. This miniature is going to be placed out somewhere in the town for the most part, some characters can do other things, but for the most part, you're going out into the town onto a building and you get to activate that building's ability or some of the built-in worker placement spots that are on the board. You only get to do one thing and then that is your town action. You then move into the crux of the game, which is your character action and the worker actions in the form of recruited uh, people workers and these sprites here, magical sprites mm. that are going to come into your player tray and be used as additional actions. But there's an interesting synergy because depending on what action you take with your physical miniature in town is going to dictate the type of action that you can take on your player board as part of your character action. So you can see that the actions are split into these sprite actions or these worker actions and these colors are represented on the board. So there is something that you need to think about. How does my town action interact with my character action? And then also depending on the type of worker that you've recruited, into your player board, you're then going to be able to play out different actions by reducing the number of pips shown on that worker um, and so they are acting as a temporary helper. 
exactly what you're doing as your character action depends on which character you've taken on because in this game another interesting element is that depending on your character you will have a completely different set of mechanics that are based around some very well-known well-loved mechanics <laughs> so for example the two characters that we have set up and the majority of the play as well I will say that Maggie and I spent were with the easiest character being the farmer which is a polyomino tile based mechanic mechanic and the merchant which is the most difficult um, which is basically a supply and demand economic style game that you're playing about the pricing of different uh, materials and how you're going to satisfy different customers that come in and compete with merchants so we won't go into each of the different details of each of these characters there are plenty of videos that you can explore on other channels that will do that um, but suffice to say that your character that you choose is going to have you doing different activities to that of the other players in the game. To finish off a day or a round in this game there is a dusk phase which involves a bit of admin, a bit of cleanup before you then start a fresh day with a new weather card. Now to tackle the how do you win this game there is no winning or losing in this game and that's what makes it interesting but there is a way of progressing through this game so I do want to make that clear that throughout the different games of Mythwind you will be making your way through a very large event deck that is going to push a particular story forward. You will have choices to make along the way and that's going to change which subsequent events are shuffled into the deck. There are also closed sealed envelopes that are going to give you surprises along the way but obviously those are really one shot as you work your way through the core story of the game. So we're going to talk more about the nitty-gritty of the theme and all of the mechanics in the review and let's get into that now. So for this review, we're just going to cut to the chase and say, look, this game is not going to be for everybody. It was quite a different experience, uh, even for us. And that's part of what we're hoping you'll get from this video to help you decide, is this something that's going to be for you? Yes. And just to clarify, as always in our experiences of gaming, is not to say a game is good or bad. We only put games on our channel that we think are going to be good games. Yeah. And we really just want to help you understand if it's a game that's going to align with your tastes and preferences. And as part of that, we have identified for us the two key reasons or the two key drivers as to whether this game might work for you or not. And the first driver that we want to talk about is how you feel about a game that is a grind. And I don't use a grind in a negative sense. No, where the purpose of the game, in a way, is the enjoyment and the sort of going into the, yeah, the, the sort of uh, savoring the small day-to-day grind. Yeah, the, the grind. It's <laughs> yeah. about the journey and not the destination. Correct. That yeah. is 100% what this game set out to do. And it does that quite well. But if you are like me, my experience of this game is that the work that you are putting into your character, the small like the, I suppose the grinds that you're putting in or the amount of effort that you're put, putting mm -hmm. in from game to game is, is quite a lot to try and progress the skill set of your character. The payoff for that grind, in my opinion, is not satisfying enough mm -hmm. for me because it is small increments, small steps in the story, and I want to feel like I am achieving something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for me, this game doesn't scratch that itch, but that is an entirely different experience. Yeah. Um, for Maggie. Yeah, because I think this is the same thing of going, if you if you want big, booming, surprise and amazing sort of like, oh my goodness, this was like unbelievable. This is not really the environment or the space that's been created. It's really about just one, there's that slow progression. Like it is, it is slow to get things up and going with your character. And so there's that's part of the 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 enjoy more that's part of like the tension of kind of going oh you know it's this is this is tricky this is hard the game is sort of pushing back on me a little bit um and then obviously as you progress and things start getting better it's like oh there's an enjoyment in going this now like i've improved like things now actually feel better now but still even like even though you do have obviously like you have objectives for each season or each kind of gaming session and you have all those buildings to work to, to work towards um and then obviously you're going to need to be sort of reverse engineering going, oh well then what resources do we need and then what do i need to do and how are we going to get those resources up 
it's still, even when you build those buildings, there's not going to be in, like night and day sort of changes. It's going to be just like incremental, incremental yeah. changes. Your, and yeah, the amount of hours though that you're putting into that, that the amount of effort in mm -hmm. terms of hours is quite substantial yeah. for a game that is changing incrementally. And I liken this, I, I was thinking about why does this game hit so differently for Maggie and I? We always talk about our differences in mm. game preferences and uh, we love our differences in game yeah. preferences because yeah. it allows us to explore how we think differently about different experiences. And uh, I can only liken it to the fact that the video game Stardew Valley is one that Maggie has played for over 200 hours. <laughs> she Maggie. will frequently reset and yeah. start from nothing yeah. and spend... I mean, Stardew Valley players are there. You, you know what that's like. It's yeah. like, let's just let's just take it back to the start. Let's start a new save. Like, exactly. Yeah. And in, this, in that world, you are wandering around doing things and maybe things are growing over time, but you're mm. putting a lot of hours into it. It's a lot of grind. Yeah. And I can yeah. completely see that that is what they set out to create here. And that is the feeling it gives you I don't have the patience for that <laughs> nor the willingness to put in yeah. hundreds of hours yeah. into something that doesn't have that kind of payoff or mm. sense of competitiveness mm -hmm. um, so for me that that's why this fell flat and I think that is going to be such a key driver mm. as to whether you find this game compelling or not yeah for me then it became about so this is something that you can play obviously you know solo as well and you can actually even change character in between seasons so you can kind of play a season as one character and then you save that character and go actually next season let me try mm. this character or let me move on to this character or, um, and, and any player can be doing that I actually found the most enjoyment when then I was just doing that and going oh okay so mm, maybe the next build that I work towards is that, you know, the delicatessen. Oh, but for the delicatessen, I'm gonna need the bakery. And for the baker, I'm gonna need the trading post. Okay, so for the trading post, I just want, want to make sure that I get these things. So then that gave me a uh, sort of a short-term objective with a longer-term objective, and then just sort of relaxing into that and exploring my character and the mechanics and the kind of the grind of my character to sort of go, oh, okay, oh yeah, I managed to do that, or I'm working my way. Um, it's not gone forever if I didn't manage to hit that, you you know, achieve that in mm -hmm. this game. It's like, okay, well now I'm in a better position for next game or my next season, be closer mm -hmm. to that. And that became the enjoyment. It's the sort of settling into a, um, your expectations are not of huge and incredible adventures, you know, where something like explosive is going to happen. It's just, it's an enjoyment of town life, of day-to-day -day occurrences. Mm -hmm. And yes, some things will happen, but it's by and large a fairly sort of peaceful, cozy, not violence and combat uh, driven story. Yeah, and I think the second big uh, consideration that you should have in thinking about whether this game is for you or not is the level of interaction. Mm. Um, uh, you know, I always talk about the fact I like quite interactive games, whether that's competitively interactive, but I just enjoy interacting with other players. That's why I play games. Mm. Whereas Maggie is very Not happy so much. Yeah, I'm <laughs> to be happy doing to her own thing. Focus yeah. on my own thing. Yeah. yeah. And in this game, um, yes, it's true. It is cooperative and there is a shared board with shared resources. Mm. And if you are collectively trying to get a building built, you might discuss, hey, I need you to go and get that or work on this so that we can achieve getting mm. that building or we can meet our goal. Yeah. Um, so yes, there is a little bit of cooperation, but the core of this game mm -hmm. is definitely in the character actions. And because these are also mechanically different and there's a bit of procedural admin associated mm -hmm. with each of the different characters, because there is a booklet that mm. relates to each of the characters yeah. and the person playing it needs to be familiar mm -hmm. with this booklet prior to playing. It means that there is a high likelihood that during the character portion of this game, you are fairly head down yeah. doing this simultaneously in a way that has very, very low levels yeah, of interaction. Yeah, you would actually go through entire games not having any idea how that other person's character even works. Exactly. So if then mm -hmm. I wanted to take on one of Amy's characters, I would have to learn it from scratch and be like, mm -hmm. oh, how does yeah. this work? Yeah. So you get to see the outcome of what they're doing, the mm -hmm. outcome of what they're producing, the amount of money they have, but maybe there's not a lot of care or need to care yeah. about how they're getting there. So yeah. some people are going to enjoy that and just sink into their character like Maggie. And some people like me are going to find that quite like, well, 
you didn't even get to see <laughs> how amazing that was and you don't even understand why it was such a big yeah, deal. You don't, you don't get to appreciate what masterful, <laughs> uh, you know, gameplay I'm uh, managing to work out in here. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. And also, so if you um, have played a game like Merchant's Cove, mm. it was a similar experience um, playing that in that the first game that I played of that, I only knew what my character did and I didn't know what anybody else's did and I found that to be a very isolating experience. Mm. Like yeah. I was almost playing a solo game game yeah. in company yeah um, and sometimes that's how this game makes me whereas feel for as me well. like an experience of something like that is going oh i'm just having so much fun like exploring what my character does and it's great that i don't have to worry about what anyone else is uh sort of doing and then at the end of that game i end up leaving going oh now i wonder what it will feel like to play with this other character mm -hmm. and, and explore that other character so that's sort of similar here Yep, so what is your orientation towards those two things? Mm -hmm. Towards a slow grind with small increments and, yeah. a, and a story that slowly develops? Yeah, so about just savoring just the little things. It's not about one really big payoff over there or over there. Yeah. And your uh, level of interaction that you want to have in games. If you can answer those two questions, I think it's going to give you a very clear picture mm. on whether this game is for you or not. But then let's move into a bit more of a review because because there are plenty of things that Maggie and I really agreed about mm -hmm. with this game, both positive and negative. So now we're going to talk about some of those things. So the first thing that we agreed on is how amazing the trays are. So the tray system where you get to have all of the characters are contained within their tray. You can save the characters, but also the game. So the game itself is essentially three different uh, trays that stack together. Any buildings that you've constructed stay there. Any sort of resources or things that buildings that might be in the queue to be developed can stay there, even what season you are up to. And then that all just stacks beautifully in the box. And it is by far the single best saving mechanism because it means that then, you know, if we want to play at mm -hmm. another time, you just kind of pull out all of the different characters and go, yep, I'll pick up this character, I open it up and everything is just ready to go exactly as I left it last time. And even the state of the board is ready to go. That all stacks on top of this, which is essentially how you're managing um, all of the, like, you know, the weather deck and the adventure. So it's just best in class in terms of like it that is. attempt of trying to create a game that you can easily mm -hmm. save pack away and then unpack and it's good to yeah. go. And I think that the character boards have been so thoughtfully designed mm. because they are specific to the character mm -hmm. and the way that you not only save your game that is very good, but also the way that it um, it can store when it hasn't been set up. There's a thoughtful, you, you know, the thoughtful touches mm. of like, this is the active resources that you have. And there's also a spot for the inactive resources yes. that you have. Yeah. There's like slots for the upgrades that you've made, but then there's storage underneath these mm -hmm. boards for the yeah. store, for the um, upgrades that you yeah. haven't made and yet. And any so, money that you had you kind of kept after the end of your last game and yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. So everything has its place and yeah. that is just so appreciated. Even just this detail of you have any, as, as the game progresses, you're going to be getting more uh, workers available uh, to be recruited. And so once you've unlocked those, unless you lose them for some reason across, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the game, they, they stay available so you can keep recruiting them. And so they've got this little uh, lock and unlock that can just move along these places so that you can kind of save the ones that are mm -hmm. unlocked so that you remember, okay, these were the ones that go there. Like even a detail like that is just so thoughtful and it just works really well. But now this brings us to the second thing that we agree on. Mm -hmm. And despite the storage and the saving mechanisms being wonderful, mm. um, the there are some small things that are missing that would make it easier to get into each of these characters. Mm. Now, we've mentioned that the characters do play differently to each other. Yeah. Um, and they come with these little journals that explain mm. how your character acts across the different phases of the game and yeah. the character actions that are available to you. On the back of these booklets, there is a summary of the phases of the game and where you need to do certain things that mm. relate to your character. However, there is no summary of actually the character's actions. Mm. So every time you need to refer back to, 
oh wait, what were my options in terms of my character? Mm. You have to flip through this book and it's not easy to find your yeah. way through these books. They're perfectly fine if you're reading it from uh, back to back mm. uh, when you're first getting to know the characters. But as a quick reference guide, they I just found this was not helpful at all. It really needed just one, like a couple more player aids where you could have a summary, not just of, because the summary that is included here is just a one line of like, oh, it's this action. It's like, just give me one more, yeah, give me a like sentence, little sentence. Of, uh, to remind me, what is it yeah. that I do with that action? Yeah. Because in some instances, they're fairly self-explanatory, but in others, it's like, wait, what was that again? Like, how, how does that play out? Yeah. That would have made all the difference in the world, because then it means that you're not having to go back and reference this. And then also something to reference, um, obviously, the uh, some of the things that are like on the board as well, because particularly if you, if you play your game, save it, and then don't play it for a couple of weeks, and mm. then you pull it out, it's like, wait, what was the flow again? Like, what? Like that's something that's very easily addressable in a quick, hey, this is the day floor, this is, you know, these are the mm. key actions, and this is how they kind of work, instead of having to go yeah. back into the rule book. The other thing that I'll say is there were a couple of um, instances as well where things like, for example, your skills. So your skills usually will have a requirement of um, once you meet this, you're going to be able to kind of pay essentially for that and go into town to be able to kind of activate it, which will turn them over and give you an ability, which are then the ones that get you get to kind of slot them into these spots, which will give you kind of like bonus um, bonus abilities or bonus actions when you take that character action. However, there's quite a number of these tiles and you have no reference on one side of what's on the other side. So for example, I need to have it on the side that for my uh, for my farmer, I need to know, oh, okay, that's the thing, that's the payment that I'm going to have mm -hmm. to do for it. But I, I have no way of knowing, well, wait, what does that unlock unless I manually pick them up? And that becomes unnecessary sort of friction admin wise or cognitive uh, load wise mm -hmm. that is like ah oh, it sort of takes me out of the game and it could have been a, a really simple uh, thing same with things like the um there's equipment that the farmer can uh, can obtain to make things more efficient. Um, and yeah, same with this one. It's like, I, I, I know on the one side, it's like, these are the requirements, but I can't actually remember what does it actually unlock unless I physically mm -hmm. turn them around. And that is a constant thing that happens same even yeah. with the buildings yes. so with the the buildings themselves so the buildings all have obviously on the one side this is probably the most relevant side right now is going what does it cost us at a one or two player count um versus on a three or higher um but then that actually doesn't tell you what what you're is going the to, building what's the do? building gonna why do, do for i want you? this building yeah. it tells you like you know what you're going to gain when you build it but then you have to be turning them over to go, oh, that's right, that's what we get. Like we get to have this particular ability where we're gonna now be able to exchange resources. So there isn't really a quick and easy way no, to and, access that. No, and it means that. that you are constantly referencing both books. So yeah. I need to know my skills in this book again. I need to look at the appendix of the town charter yeah. to understand what the buildings are going to do for me or spend so much time flipping everything and over. the way that the book the the buildings are kind of represented it's just it's not very visually uh, appealing mm. it's just like text so you're like oh so what uh, so again that would have been a fairly simple uh iconography wise implementation that would make you make it a lot easier throughout mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, it would yeah. remove some barriers, and mm -hmm. particularly in a game where you want to be swapping characters, yeah. it would allow you to, you know, not just learn the character for the first time, but jump yeah. straight back into a, a different character again. Now, the third thing that we agree on is something that we feel was a bit of a missed opportunity in this game. This game is all about creating a beautiful village mm -hmm. um, that is going to reveal itself across a number of different games. You're gonna spend a lot of hours grinding yeah. at this game to develop a trading post, a general store, mm. the fishing ground, yeah. the chapel. And unfortunately, these buildings are quite abstract. Yeah, They but... don't give you the sense, like other games, that you are creating a thematic yeah. Town. I'll say the the illustrations on them are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I really like that because then you start seeing the town kind of come alive with all these different buildings. So that that's great. But then what they actually do for you, often I found fairly anticlimactic and and a lot and of very the times, similar and very similar. So it's like a lot of them just end up being uh, the same 
action essentially, but just to help you generate a different resource. So it's like this one, you do this to bring up this particular resource. This other one that is a completely different building does exactly the same thing, but for another resource. For another resource. So then it's yeah. like you, you don't end up getting, it's like initially like, oh, that's great. Cause we're going to be able to kind of generate more of that, more of that. But then as they progress, it's like, oh, that just sort of boosts that ability a bit more, or it just means that we're going to be getting some of them on an ongoing basis. But that's kind of it. That's sort of where it ends. So thematically, it's not like, oh my goodness. And now this, you know, this means that this, um, I don't know, the bakery is going to be creating these particular goods. And then I'm going to be able to do this. It's like, no, no, it's just an icon. Uh, and then all the other buildings work exactly the same way, just for different icons. Yeah. And so it, it just sort of robs away a bit of the excitement of like, oh, we're going to be able to unlock. So then it, it becomes Which abs- the yeah, it's just a, abstracted. It becomes mm. a lot more kind of, Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, almost sterile where it could have been so rich. Yeah, and I'll compare it to two different games that I've had experiences with. One, I'm going to reference Stardew Valley again, but this time the board game. Yeah. Um, and that is not a game that is necessarily for me. I don't have any like love of the IP and you know I don't really like a cooperative game. Mm. But at least in that game, I felt like I was going fishing and it felt fun because I was going out and going fishing mm. and it gave me the sense that I was fishing because I was mm. at that location on the board. And as you go to different locations, I had that thematic sense of the connection between like going there mm. and having that experience in that part of the village. Yeah. Another game that I'll uh, talk about is a game uh, called Destinies. Mm-hmm. And in, in this game, you would go to a merchant and the merchant uh, in town and the merchant would have things that you could buy mm-hmm. and, so, and sell to. And, like you could, yeah. you could and so the, exchange. Yeah. Yeah. And so it felt like that location had a real like thematic tie in. Mm. Here, as Maggie mentioned, there's so much repetition Mm. and it just feels like a really like okay it's going to unlock this ability for me to change this resource into that resource but everything is just about these four Mm -hmm. fairly abstracted resources and I just and here I am as a thinker asking for more theme (laughs) but in a critical evaluation of this game Mm. and I know the type of people that are going to enjoy this game like Maggie Mm. I just feel like that was such a missed opportunity to spend more time probably developing what it felt like to be in Mm. the village yeah so that's a shame but (laughs) the thing that we do agree on is the final point which is something that shines in this game which is the events and the adventures so one of the actions you can take when you go out and do a town action is to go on an adventure and because I was lacking the thematic like Mm. vibe of the town everywhere else I found myself often going on an adventure Mm. because I didn't care so much for what the buildings were going to bring me they're not that they're not that exciting they're not that exciting they don't give you very much they just help you achieve usually the goal that you've set Mm. your mind to um or to build another building um so go on an adventure an adventure feels like an adventure because you have to draw a card from this deck that's going to be completely random and you're going to bump into someone that's in Mm -hmm. town or you're going to there's going to be some kind of creature that you'll come across and you have to make a decision about what you're going to do that decision will have some consequences and it will have consequences Mm -hmm. and often they are terrible consequences that cost you (laughs) money or your um, shared resources Mm -hmm. and sometimes they're something really fun that Mm -hmm. gives you a boost and you can openly discuss if you want like what this adventure is and what you're going to choose and I found that to bring in a sense of interactivity Mm -hmm. it was the core part of the thematic experience for me of the game and it made me feel like I was there was a time and place that I was existing in. Yeah, and it also helped move the story forward because a lot of times some of those things, some of those adventures might actually add things to the event deck. So these, the event deck essentially Mm. what's going to be like quite literally progressing the core story uh, of the game. So yeah, and and then it did feel like, oh, there is a purpose beyond just like, oh, having a little bit of a story here. Mm -hmm. And they do, it is actually a progressive story. So it's not just like a random thing that then has no connection to anything else. So I did appreciate that, that both the events, um, the event deck and how that progresses and the adventure deck and how that progresses, they made sense in a, in a narrative sense. They do. And yeah, the, the choices that you make have consequences in yep. terms of the cards that are put in there. And so for me, I found myself every time a weather card was flipped, I was hoping it was just going to be another event yeah. because that's the payoff for the grind. Mm-hmm. You're doing all of these things to progress this town forward, but it felt like the thematic richness was coming from the events and yes. the adventures. So I really love what they did there. I know that you enjoyed that part of it too. I just wish that that was more reflected Mm -hmm. in the things that you were doing around town. And look, I feel like it may not be too late because the buildings is something that, you know, as you're 
there's no end to the game. There mm-hmm. might be an end to the narrative, the core narrative, as you go through, like, obviously your event deck and all the adventures, but then you can keep playing and you can keep evolving and, and sort of uh, essentially replacing buildings for other buildings and shift and changing things. Mm-hmm. So there is space for expansions to bring mm-hmm. in new buildings and yeah. even new adventure cards and new things that happen. There's already an expansion with a new um, a new character, which I actually haven't played yet, but I'm actually really excited to <laughs> check out. It's yeah. like the innkeeper. I'm like, oh, And yes. I will speak to that because... But- Maggie and I have played with all four of the base game yeah. characters and um, I, I want to talk a little bit about like the difficulty of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so the merchant is the most difficult and I would say it's going to be fine from a, uh, if you are into heavier games, you're not going to be like, this is, I can't yeah. crack this. Yeah. Um, it, it was fairly easy for me to understand what to do. I had pain points around referencing, um, but I think that it is quite uh, more sophisticated than the other character I play which play with uh, predominantly which was the crafter because it has almost like an automa that you also need to be facilitating like two automa so it's like the, the <laughs> yeah. competitors like you're the, yeah the other merchants that you're competing against they're mm. sort of these abstract no abstract yeah they're these sort of automas that you're having to facilitate and depending on the weather or the thing different things that happen this is yes. how I like what I saw I actually <laughs> haven't had a chance yet to play that character yeah. but yeah it seemed like it seemed like actually a much more admin heavy uh, character it was quite because admin I often heavy, yeah. was sort of waiting for you to go oh, wait so yeah. that means that I have to do this and this happens with this yeah. order mine whereas I'm like well, well done <laughs> yeah Next. and maybe <laughs> was playing with the easiest the farmer the yeah farmer. the farmer is very very straightforward in that it is a polyamino tile uh, sort of game you have mm. your own kind of plot uh, of land here and you start out with these sort of weeds that mm. you that are obstructing the spaces where you might be able to to build or, or um, mm. plant your crops. So these are things that you're going to have to rip out and they're gonna cost you money as well. So it becomes part of the initial, oh, like the initial grind of getting, opening up your mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. Then it just has this sort of market here where if you go to take actions to um, plant, then you can get always the one from, the, these will come from a bag, so they're kind of randomized and there's three different types of crops. This one's always going to be free, but then depending on, mm-hmm. you know, the as you go up, they might cost you more and then they all kind of slide. And they'll have two sides. They have like the, the untended side um, that again, you can kind of place anywhere and you can see that all, all of them on their untended side look very similar. That was another gripe uh, for me going, ah, why can you like, it'd be easier to differentiate Mm. what's going to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. So this one, then one of the actions is to water it, which would then turn it over. And then it means that then you've got something that you can now sell for that um, for that um, that price. Mm. Um, same with like, you know, they've, they've got those, the, the beautiful uh, strawberries, and then I think this word like beans and things like that. So yeah, so that's how that one works. Yeah, and I actually wanted to talk about the characters because it, I think it connects to the, I feel like I want better connection between the character that you're playing and the world that you live in. Mm. Um, so as a merchant, I wish there was a building that had a stronger power for the merchant because of my level of expertise in that area or because I was a crafter or because you're a farmer, you could go out and interact with the world in different mm. ways and there wasn't that level of connectivity. And if there was going to be an expansion for the game, I would love to see further development in mm. the buildings. I do want to say just very quickly, the other mm. one that we haven't talked about is the ranger, which actually has been my favorite because the ranger <laughs> has their own mini game where you are going on, not just going into town, you actually decide if you're going to go and check out and an, 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 take an action in town or go on an expedition. And so the expeditions are all about this, uh, sometimes a little bit of push your luck, but mostly like resource management because mm-hmm. you're going to be gaining different resources that you're going to be bringing with you to this expedition. And depending on the level of journey or expedition that you decide to undertake, some of those you're going to be needing to use some of this to uh, of those resources that you bring with you to either succeed or fail those expeditions mm. which again at the end of those you either are going to come back with fewer stuff which is bad or with more stuff which is mm. great because it's going to help you with those resources but i really really enjoyed that's probably the character that i'm enjoying the most yeah and so you can see that a lot of work has gone into making the characters feel very yes. different and the actions that you're doing feel very different so that is um you know a big plus for the yeah. game if you like having different characters with different mechanics. Mm. But 
that's a, basically a summary of everything that we agreed on and disagreed <laughs> yeah. on with this game. And we hope it gives you some clarity over, over whether it's a game for you. Mm -hmm. um, bearing in mind everything that I've said, if you've just skipped ahead to this rating, please, I urge you to go and listen to the rationale for this. Yeah. Um, but in my, for my game preferences and in my experience, I have to give this a, a rating from my personal experience and I would give it a six. Mm -hmm. And that is not to say it's a bad game. It is simply not a game for me and not a game that I enjoy because of the payoffs that I'm looking for mm. um, in a game. And that six is slightly higher than a game like Sleeping Gods because mm. it doesn't have as much narrative and <laughs> there was more yeah. mechanics for me to explore. And I, do en I don't necessarily enjoy games that have battle in them all of the mm -hmm. time. And so I appreciate it for all of those reasons, um, but it's a lower rating for me okay. overall. So for me, it's actually going to be... This is, uh, to give a bit of context, this was... One of my most anticipated games <clears throat> now two years uh, going yes. because we've kind of been waiting for this since you know since it was kind mm. of first launched and you know back mm -hmm. then so this is so there were the expectations were very very high so I'm gonna rate this a 7.9 uh, largely because I do enjoy the once I was able to kind of relax into oh okay so it's not about one big payoff over there one big payoff it's like it's about it's about just that day-to-day -day and the progress of my character and unlocking those those things that are going to give us incremental improvements uh, and then just exploring like living out the life in the valley through those events and those adventures so then I was able to kind of settle into that and then go oh, okay this is really this is enjoyable and I'm enjoying exploring all the different characters um, however it's something that I know probably once I finish the core story it's uh, unless there's obviously additional either new characters so I am looking forward to checking out the innkeeper and like seeing how mechanically that that plays out um, but unless there's additional kind of content created Created, it's probably a game that then that would end um, yeah the experience would kind of end for me there. Mm. I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope you found it useful if you did please like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll be back with more board game content soon but otherwise bye for now bye